Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an AMP A10 tablet, which is a 10-inch Android tablet with a 1280 by 800 pixel display and a Freescale IMX quad processor. That makes it one of the first devices to ship with that particular quad-core CPU. And in terms of overall performance, it does pretty well. It, uh, it scores well in benchmarks. It's not quite as fast as something with, say, an NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad-core processor, like this Google Nexus 7 tablet, but it does score higher than something like a... Um, um, first-generation Kindle Fire or Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, which have TI OMAP processors, OMAP 4 dual-core CPUs. Um, so, you know, in terms of sort of sheer number crunching capabilities, it does pretty well. But there are some things that it doesn't do necessarily quite as well. Um, so, for instance, I've noticed that when you're surfing the web, you know, scrolling's reasonably smooth. Pinch to zoom can be a little bit jagged at times. It's actually doing pretty well right now. But um, let's go ahead and load the full website here. You can see it does load pages pretty quickly. And when the page isn't completely loaded, it's a little bit more jagged here. Uh, the biggest problem I really have with the tablet, though, is the battery life. And I think that really has more to do with the uh, manufacturing than the processor per se, but theoretically you should be able to get around eight hours of battery life according to the manufacturer estimates. In actual performance, I found that I get about four hours of battery life, but more importantly, the battery meter is completely messed up. Uh, right now it's reporting that I have 7%. I don't believe it because what happens is I plug this in for two, three days on a charge and it reports I have 80%. Then I turn off the display turn it back on again, maybe fiddle for a few minutes, and what happens is it'll say I have 90% or 72% or something else. Um, like I said, it gets about four hours of screen on time, but the battery meter is pretty unreliable, and once it dips below the uh, 7 to 9% point, you're going to start getting pop-ups a lot, uh, saying, you know, plug it in. But you might be able to run for another hour or so under the circumstances, so the battery life's not uh, super reliable. Uh, build quality uh, could also be better. This particular device was sent to me by PandaWill for purposes of review. They sell it for about $220, and um, it's, you know, it's a... It doesn't come from one of the better known PC makers. It's the AMP A10, it comes from a Chinese manufacturer, and there's a bubble here underneath the screen. This isn't necessarily going to be on yours, but it's just sort of an indication that the build quality might not be up to the standards that you might be used to from more expensive tablets from better known companies. Uh, this little bubble looks like the sort of thing that you would get if you applied a screen protector improperly, but it's under the actual screen. There's, there's really nothing I can do to make it move or go away. When the device is on, I notice there's also a little blue dot here under um, at the bottom of the screen or the top of the screen, I suppose, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but it shows up the most when you're on a white background or a blue, uh, a black background. So there's that little blue dot that uh, doesn't go away, so it's a little dead pixel. Um, there's an ambient light sensor built in right up here. As far as I can tell, it doesn't really work, because I stick this on auto and nothing really happens. But overall, I mean, it feels pretty good for a 10-inch tablet. It's got an aluminum rear panel, plastic sides, which are made to sort of look metallic. You've got plastic buttons here for uh, screen on and volume up and down. And on the sides, we've got micro USB, mini HDMI, micro SD card slot, an audio jack, and power jack. And that's pretty much it. On the back, we've got stereo speakers and a camera. And on the front, another camera. The stereo speakers, um, First of all, I always kind of wonder why somebody would put stereo speakers so close to each other. Uh, you can't really get much of a stereo effect, but in this case, you'd barely notice anyway, because the speakers are really, really quiet. Um, things sound pretty good if you plug in a headphone jack or, or a headphone or external speakers, but using the internal speakers, I wouldn't really want to listen to music or watch movies or even make a Skype call on this. I think I'd want to plug in something so I could hear a little bit better. So, anyways, for $220, it's, uh, it's an interesting device. I wanted to test it because it's one of the first devices with a Freescale uh, quad-core processor. I'm not sure I would recommend buying it even at $220, but it, uh, it does sort of show in terms of uh, performance what we might be able to expect from future devices with the same processor. Um, and this particular device is, uh, is available if, if you really wanted to get it from PandaWill for $220, and a number of sellers in AliExpress and other places are also selling it for uh, around the same price or less. So it's not very expensive, especially when you compare it with um, 
you know, newer newer tablets from Apple or uh, Samsung or other companies, but um, you know, I think you could probably find something else in the $200 range that might make you a little bit happier in terms of the battery life and, and uh, build quality. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and uh, you can uh, find out more about this device at lilliputing.com.